Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for June 29th, 2022, current on 11.55 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for three tropical cyclones to be forming over the next couple of days, one in the Gulf of Mexico and two in the tropical Atlantic and Caribbean. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, well, it is certainly quite active for the end of June. First of all, we have Invest Area 95L approaching the Texas coastline today. This has tried to become a tropical cyclone, but is battling some pretty strong upper-level winds. We also have potential tropical cyclone 2, not yet a tropical storm, but is on the verge of becoming one as it is nearing the Western Caribbean, moving westward towards Central America. And then we have this tropical wave over here, which will interact with the environment over the next several days, generally moving towards the northwest. Pretty dry air and strong upper level winds associated with uh, PTC2 will kind of prevent uh, this system from really developing. But there is some chance of this developing as it nears the northern part of the Lesser Antilles. So let's go and look at everything. The overall tropical weather outlook for this morning, again, this is the 8 a.m. outlook. Again, here's Invest Area 95L, 40% chance over the next 24 hours, really, as this begins to move inland over Texas. Potential tropical cyclone 2, 90% as it is heading towards Central America. And then this wave back here, this tropical wave, this third disturbance, has a 30% chance as this heads gradually northwestward towards the island chain, but pretty unfavorable conditions will await after it starts to go through here. Looking at the track forecast here for potential tropical cyclone 2, again, this is the 11 a.m. advisory. Sustained winds right now of 40 miles per hour, so this would be, as soon as it gets a low-level circulation, this will be a tropical storm. The next name here is Bonnie. It is moving west at 24 miles per hour under the trade winds, but there are tropical storm warnings in effect for portions of the northern South American coastline here of Venezuela and Colombia. This is generally moving westward and is expected to continue on this forward trajectory over the next couple of days. This is expected to be approaching the Central American coastline here by Friday afternoon and evening, where an eventual landfall will occur somewhere within this area by Friday evening. So this will be a primarily a nighttime event and this could be near or at hurricane intensity as it does so, although not explicitly forecast. And this will cross over then into the East Pacific where there is the chance that this will actually strengthen once crossing into the East Pacific Basin. And we'll have to monitor for potential uh, impacts to coastal Mexico here, which we'll talk about more in detail in tomorrow's video. Looking at Invest Area 95L again today, the overall structure is pretty disorganized. We still do have a uh, shear cutting across this area, not really allowing for much in the way of convective organization, though we have seen a low-level circulation that has formed in this general vicinity. Again, this is now moving generally towards the northwest here into Texas today and will be bringing with it the potential for heavy rainfall and flooding. Again, that's the main concern. This could become a brief tropical cyclone as it approaches the Texas coastline. If we look at the upper level winds with the H4 forecast here again, upper level winds today are forecast to gradually uh, improve, at least temporarily, and that might allow for some outflow to get going and a storm to potentially form down here before moving inland later in uh, the next couple of days. Now, real quick look here at what to expect for this other tropical system that could be approaching the islands in the next couple of days. Again, this is the GFS A50 millibar vorticity, so the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, the context here, again, these darker oranges and reds, that's what you want to see for a healthy low pressure system in the northern hemisphere. And generally speaking, we notice that there's a very disorganized wave here approaching the island chain uh, within the next couple of days here by Friday. Pretty strong upper level winds will be cutting across this area from an upper level low and outflow here from PTC2, soon to be Bonnie, and that will really limit the amount of organization this system could have. And the overall organization won't really change much, although an upper level low does begin to form uh, as or an upper level high begins to form on Tuesday. So if we have a system near Puerto Rico, we might see some organization after that point, but pretty unfavorable conditions do await in that environment. Now switching gears here to potential tropical cyclone two, again, it is not yet a tropical storm, although it is very much so on the verge of doing so. Today, we noticed that there's very clear banding today 
with the overall convective structure and healthy outflow. This is suggesting that the storm is getting closer to tropical cyclone designation. Looking at the zoomed in satellite here, we notice that very clear banding is evident, but we also notice that there's very not really any discernible low level circulation at this point. We do have pretty calm winds that are to the south of this area right here, suggesting that a low level circulation might be somewhere within here or one that is beginning to form. But we notice that we don't really have a lot of westerly winds at the moment. So any low level circulation will probably form up in here and generally move in this general direction, pretty much what we've been expecting over the, the last couple of days. If you look at the H4 forecast here, this is the 200 millibar wind. So we're looking at the winds at about 30 to 39,000 feet uh, in the, the atmosphere here. What we noticed today is again, generally speaking, that we have some pretty strong easternlies here. This is actually created uh, in part because we have trade winds in the low levels, but we also have a displaced anticyclone over here. And it's creating a little bit of that easternly flow kind of on, on the back side of this. And th that certainly does not help. Over time, though, the system will begin to encounter more favorable conditions as it begins to align under the anticyclone. And for a brief period of time, there will be strengthening during the day Thursday into Friday. Now, the amount of intensification that can occur, at least within about a 36 hour period, is very questionable given the overall structure of the storm. Again, today it's very disheveled. And with that being said, organization at least in the short term if any will be slow to occur but once the system develops an inner core more solid intensification and more you know substantial intensification could occur after that point either way this could be near or at hurricane intensity as it approaches the central american coastline here Generally speaking, there is moderate to high impacts expected across portions of Central America here. On this general trajectory, again, we expect the storm to be approaching Central America Friday afternoon and making landfall sometime Friday evening and then crossing over into the East Pacific Basin. This will be a very short-lived system. It's going to be moving pretty quick under a pretty strong upper level high uh, to the north over the United States. And that's generally what's forcing the storm today. So again, generally speaking, we expect some pretty substantial impacts here uh, to portions of Central America. The main threat will be some heavy rainfall and wind. Again, looking at the overall wind forecast here, generally speaking, we expect there to be about 70 to 80 mile per hour winds uh, within the immediate coastline. And that number could change uh, as you know the system evolves. But generally speaking, about 70 to 80 mile per hour winds with gusts that could be as high as about 85 to 90 miles per hour as the storm is making landfall. And again, outside peripheries here, generally speaking in the Northern Central American region over here, we don't really expect much, probably on the order of about 20 to 40 mile per hour winds. So barely any tropical storm force winds on, the, on that side. And then to the South, again, generally speaking, we have to account for some error here within the track. So that's why the overall spread of 40 mile per hour winds is generally uh, pretty high at the moment. Looking at the rainfall intensities, again, generally speaking, this will be a pretty quick moving system. So generally speaking, about five to six inches of rainfall could be expected near the coastline as this begins to kind of move inland, but this will be moving at a very quick pace. So I don't really expect rainfall to be at least a huge concern that would be anything above six to eight inches. So definitely calling for about five to six inches. And again, this number will change uh, as we go forward in time. So certainly something to kind of keep in mind here. I'll have another update later this evening on this potential system and what to expect for portions of Central America. So make sure to go ahead and stay tuned for that. Elsewise, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Ormali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.